so far, all the commandlets we've been using have seemed to produce text as their output. And that's not actually true. Sure, it looks like text. But under the hood, these commandlets are working with objects. And this is a really important part of why PowerShell is so powerful. The word object is a generic term that really just means some kind of software functionality. Um, an object might be a process in Windows, or it might be a service, or it might be a file or a folder. Pretty much any part of the Windows operating system can be thought of as an object. So what does that mean? When you run a commandlet, it generally produces object as its only output, one or more objects. Those objects are actual functioning pieces of Windows. You're not just seeing a list of service names when you run get service. You're seeing the actual services that are installed on the computer. They have functionality. They have things that describe what they do. And that's what makes PowerShell so powerful. It's not just pulling a list for you. It's actually letting you tap into the functioning parts of Windows itself. Think about the components of Windows that you work with, such as files or services. A service is a good example because it has properties you can probably think of. A name, whether or not it's started, uh, a display name, a service type, a status, stuff like that. When you run get service, what you see is a list that includes three of these properties, name, display name, and status. Other properties exist for this type of object, but PowerShell doesn't display them by default. Now, within PowerShell, all commands run in a pipeline. Any objects produced by a commandlet go into the pipeline, allowing the next commandlet in the pipeline to receive those objects and work with them. At the end of the pipeline is an invisible commandlet called out default, which has the job of taking whatever objects are in the pipeline at the end and using some of those objects properties to construct the text list that you see. A set of configuration files included with PowerShell tell out default what properties to use for each type of object you might see. Here's what it looks like, a, a simple explanation of the pipeline in action. I run a commandlet called get service. It produces service objects and places them into the pipeline. At the end of the pipeline is always out default. Since there's nothing else in this pipeline, the service objects go to out default, which uses some of their properties to display a text list. Now let's see that for real. Get service. It's a single commandlet, but it still runs in a pipeline. And remember, out default is always there at the end of the pipeline, even if you can't see it. So get service gets a bunch of service objects, the actual services installed on your computer. It puts those services into the pipeline. Since there's nothing else in the pipeline, out default gets them and does its job of converting them to text. The result is a listing of services generated by selecting three of the most commonly needed properties from those objects. Here's the same thing. This time I'm actually specifying out default rather than letting it be implied, and the end result is identical. Because nothing is converted from objects to text until the end of the pipeline, you can pipe these rich, fully functional objects from one commandlet to another. Each commandlet in the pipeline can then work with the object's properties and methods do something with them, and then at the end of the pipeline, when all the commandlets have finished running, what's left is converted to text. I'll show you what it looks like. Here's a more complex example. I'm again starting with get service, which produces several service objects. But now I'm putting another commandlet, where object, into the pipeline. As you'll learn later in this course, where object filters objects out of the pipeline based on criteria I specify, such as uh, whether or not the services are running. So, where object receives those service objects and filters out the ones that don't meet my criteria. Anything which does meet my criteria stays in the pipeline. Out default is at the end of the pipeline, and it receives whatever objects are left. It uses their properties to construct the text list that we see on the screen. So let's do that example in PowerShell. This will involve using a commandlet that I haven't explained yet, but trust me, we'll get to it. Right now, just sort of roll with it so that you can see where this pipeline thing is going. I'll start by running get service. That's going to put services into the pipeline, just as it did in the previous example. However, this time, out default isn't the last thing in the pipeline. I'm manually piping those services to where object. 
Its job is to remove some objects from the pipeline based on whatever criteria I specify. And my criteria is to keep objects that have a start property equal to running. Anything else will fall out of the pipeline. So whatever's left in the pipeline goes to out default. And as you can see here, is turned into a text list. I can do the same thing by manually specifying the out default commandlet as part of the pipeline. Hit enter and I get a list of running services. This demonstrates that the pipeline is not working with text, but is instead working directly with the attributes of the services or, or whatever other objects I put into the pipeline. So why is this object stuff so important? Well, because it's cool. You don't need to use text as an intermediary. Let me give you an example from the Unix world. In the Unix world, we might produce a text list of services, use a utility called grep to just find the text where a particular column said running, produce a second text list of just our running services that way, feed that list to another command, which might stop or refresh or do something else to the services. In other words, every single step requires a text file as the intermediary, and every command has to be able to parse these text files to look for certain data in a certain column. And you can imagine how complicated that gets. Well, with PowerShell, you're working directly with the functionality of whatever software you're managing. There's no need to create these text files in between and to parse these text files to get stuff done. You're actually working with hardcore functionality. Now, if, if this whole thing of objects just seems like so much gobbledygook and, and everything else, look, don't sweat it. You'll see a lot more of these as we go through the course, and you'll start to understand where they sort of fit in to the overall PowerShell theme. A lot of common administrative tasks are exposed as PowerShell commandlets, such as commandlets that let you stop, start, pause, and resume services. While these commandlets accept objects as input, telling them which services, for example, to start upon, most of these commandlets don't produce any output. That means if you wanted to do something else with those objects, you couldn't because they wouldn't remain in the pipeline. I'll show you what I mean. Here's another pipeline with get service. I'll be piping its output to stop service. So get service gets the services, pipes them to stop service, which stops the services and consumes the objects. See, nothing is placed into the pipeline. And so out default has no objects to work with. And the result is no output since there's nothing to create that output from. Most commandlets that consume objects in this fashion have a dash pass through parameter, which tells them to not only do whatever they're going to do, but to also pass the objects through the pipeline for another commandlet to work with. So let's see a practical ex example. I'm, I'm still going to use get service, but this time I'm piping the output to stop service using the dash pass through parameter. So get service gets the services, pipes them to stop service, which stops them and normally would consume the objects, but this time the objects are piped through or passed through so that out default has some objects to receive and work with. The result is a list of services which were stopped. So let's look at some more pipeline examples. I'll start with get service and pipe those services to stop service. You can probably imagine what that might actually do to my computer. So let's add the what if parameter to the stop service commandlet. Now when I hit enter, stop service just lists what it would have done without actually doing it. Next example, same idea, get process pipe to stop process. I'm adding the what if parameter again, and you can see what would have happened if I hadn't. And as I've said before, aliases and commandlets are interchangeable. So if I do the same example again, I can use the kill alias instead of stop process and get the same results. All right, let's do a slightly more realistic example. I'll get get event log to retrieve the newest five events from my security event log. And those aren't text. They're the actual event log entry objects. And I don't want them turned into text either. Instead, I want an HTML table showing them all. So I'll pipe those objects to convert to HTML, which, as you can see, produces HTML code. That might be more helpful if I somehow piped all that HTML into a file so that I could look at it in a web browser but that's another module. Please pause this video now and follow the instructions in your lab guide to complete this lab. There are hints in the lab guide if you need them and try to complete the lab without referring to the solution in your lab guide. When you're done, resume this video and I'll review a sample solution with you.
For task one, I want to get a bunch of service objects and see what properties and methods they have. So I'm piping those objects to get member. I couldn't do that if get service was just generating a text list. Get member actually looks at the object to see what attributes and capabilities it has, and it lists those for me. It works with objects, not text. For task two, I'm going to get a bunch of process objects using get process and then pipe them to out file, converting them to text and writing that text into a file. All of the out commandlets convert objects into text and then put that text somewhere. You've already seen out default, which puts text right into the console window. All right, for task three, I'll get a bunch of services and pipe them to stop service, but I'll ask it to show me what it would have done by using the what if parameter. Task four is similar, but you needed to do some hunting to find the parameter. Looking at the help for stop, stop service would have revealed the confirm parameter, which prompts you for each object that stop service deals with. I'll answer no to the first couple, and then answer no to all to skip the rest of the services. Finally, task five is a bit tricky and really requires you to think about this whole idea of objects. I'm running get content, or you could use the alias GC or type to retrieve the contents of a file named files.txt. In that file, I've listed one file name per line. Each line of that file becomes an object. So all of the lines, that is all of the file names, are being piped to copy item. If you looked at the full help for copy item, you'll see that the source parameter is capable of accepting pipeline input. That means all those file names I piped in are being accepted as the source parameter for copy item. So all I need to specify is the destination parameter. The result is that every file name listed in my text file gets copied to the C test folder. Spend some time thinking about this one if it's not clear at first. This one's definitely a bit tricky, but really represents the heart and soul of what PowerShell is all about.